chilling words from those who oversee Nebraska corrections. A six on your side investigation asks, is the system creating another Nico Jenkins? A decade ago, Nico Jenkins murdered four people in Omaha shortly after being released from prison. Brian Mastery is live with the shocking details revealed in a new report. Hey, Brian. Jacqueline and John, I've interviewed spree killer Nico Jenkins a handful of times, and while he speaks of the god Apophis being responsible for the murders, and a number of other wild theories, the courts have repeatedly found him competent in understanding right from wrong. Jenkins once told me that the outcomes may have been different if he would have received mental health care while locked up. Nico Jenkins isn't going anywhere. He remains on death row in Tecumseh. But in 2013, he was literally begging anyone, from prosecutors to judges, to keep him locked up. Jenkins said his 10 years of prison time for carjacking as a teen did not address his mental health, and that he feared with his pending mandatory release date, he would kill if let out. And he did. Four people shot dead in 10 days. Just wanted to make sure that people were aware. Of Doug Kobernick is the Inspector General for Nebraska Corrections, basically the independent oversight for the state's prison system. The office was created because of the system failures with Nico Jenkins. Lawmakers, the public, didn't want a murderous rampage to happen again. The longer you keep people there, you're going to see worse results from them. You've got to figure out what can, can work for everybody. In his annual report, Kobernick uncovered some disturbing current examples. One man has been in restrictive housing for years, meaning he doesn't get out of his cell for more than an hour a day, and it's been that way for five and a half years. That inmate will jam out this December, meaning he'll be released directly into the community without any oversight. And I'm not saying that these people that are going to be released are like Mr. Jenkins, but um, but we have an individual who's been in restrictive housing setting for over 2,000 days and another one about 1,400 days as of a few weeks ago that are scheduled to just walk out the front door. It's um, a very serious situation, and you're trying to set people up to succeed and also to keep the public safe. So there's and you heard the inspector general mention that other individual who's been in long-term restrictive housing. If you do the math, that's nearly four years, so most of his sentence. He, too, is scheduled to be released in December, and again, without any oversight. I contacted Nebraska Corrections hours ago to see if they have a plan in place to help with the transition of these two men back into the community. I haven't heard back. I'm told law enforcement will, though, get the heads up. In the newsroom with the Six on Your Side investigation, I'm Brian Mastry. Back to you.